Hello, folks. Oh, I was myself and just got then just went off. As you can tell by the graphics, this is AEW, not Dynamite, but Fight for the Fallen. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about some AEW wrestling. Although it was weird, I think AEW's learned its lesson. Wrestling in the heat and humidity of Florida. It's one thing when it's winter time. Winter times are like absolutely amazing in Florida, minus like two weeks in February. It gets like around freezing for about two weeks in February. And then it just like stays like 50 degrees. Like there's like here, here are the seasons in Florida. Quick, very quick breakdown. May, June, July, August, September is summer. So five months you have summer. October, November, December, January, that's fall. February is winter, and March and April is spring. So when you have, that's why, very quick story, and I have another funny story to tell you guys. Oh, and, and another thing too. I wonder if I have a picture. I think I took that off my cell phone a little while ago. I might have it. On my computer though Ooh. but um when my ex-girlfriend and I were dating yeah was it her or the other one I don't know one of my ex-girlfriends I know this sounds like a very bad story but it's actually not when we were dating we were kind of serious and we were talking about things like marriage so yep when you talk about things like marriage it's like oh well I want to get married in March. She's like, what? I don't want to get married in March. It's too cold in March. I'm like, uh, when do you want to get married? I want to get married in August. I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? Oh, you have a picture of her. I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? August? You mean you actually want yourself in a wedding dress, me in a tuxedo, and our guests... To be in the Florida heat? Oh, well, it'll be in a nice garden setting. Outside in August? Just tranquilo about this. Yeah. And then I think she got up, she got upset because she said, What would happen if you had been an old classmate? You would have. I'm like, dude, if I took her out for a cup of coffee and she gave me a kiss on the cheek, I'm cool with that. What? And then, like, that was like part one of breakup. Because she's like, You and your kissy faces with a girl that you knew you 20 years ago. I'm like, Yeah. Like, we were like cool in high school. She gave me a kiss on the cheek. I could deal with that. And then the funny thing behind that is, I think after we broke up, it was the day of the Michigan Notre Dame game. And when bars were still open way back in the day, yes, I went to a bar, had a burger, a lot of beer, and guess what? Some strange girl who was a Michigan fan gave this guy a random hug and a peck on the cheek. Oh, yeah, that felt good. And it proved her wrong, saying, yeah, I can survive with a woman giving me a, a peck on the cheek. I think her boyfriend was there, and her boyfriend was just like, Heh. <laughs> it's Michigan. Go blue! I bleed maize and blue. Well, that's enough of those stories. So, again, AEW, they have to learn wrestling outside in Florida might not be the way to go. Come to Daytona Beach. No one's using the Daytona One Center. There's a little gym that's close by my house, too. Uh, so, with all that being said, let me get to some thank yous because I know my cell phone's going off because I'm in a working conundrum. My conundrum, my conundrum, do I want to take, do I want to go to one job? Do I want to go to the one job? It's inside, but sometimes the customers are real assholes. 
and it's not really exciting and the one boss tends to make it harder than it seems to be or could I work outside you get paid less but you work longer but really 90% of the time you just sit in a chair you spend like well actually 80% of the time you sit in a chair and 20% of the time you just direct people saying no you can't go here go there depending which section you work if you work in the 400 section they're just like wherever um, if you work in the 100 section, you kind of have to direct people a little bit more. 200 section, you have to tell people for the most part, no, you can't go here. Uh, third section, you either go this way or this way. So, I mean, it is kind of simple. And, again, once the race starts, so you can kind of guess where I work for a little bit, everyone's in their seats watching races. If not, they're getting a beer. So I, so it's the beginning, and at the end, everyone wants to leave. So it doesn't matter. It's like, no, nope. there's the stairs. Go down there. Oh, but I want to see that way. Stairs. And no one really bothers you because they know they don't want to get their season pass taken away from them. So that's one of the very few privileges that I do have. I, I can report them to my supervisor. Supervisor says, you, you're out of here. <laughs> I just sit there and laugh at them. But I have some thank yous to give out. And I actually checked my email. So Steve Dawson, um, thank you for that email. You, sir, have earned that six count. Big smoke. Oh, wait, who's next? Oh, Dario, I'm sorry. Dario Cueto, number dos. You, sir, know how to play the air, know how to play the air drums.
Big smoke. No, it's time for a big smoke. You, sir, are just all lit up, carrying around that briefcase boombox. Why is Waldo? I think you left a comment for me last night. But you, sir, it's a new show, so you can crawl out of here. And then tra la la! Oh, I'll tell the story right after this, but you, sir, you made me laugh, and you always win somehow by dirty pin. The reason I have to add tra la la in, um, a certain manager came back to AEW, and I said, and I left in a comment in Discord, what the hell is going on? Why is all the wrestling going back to the mid-2000s when wrestling was terrible? And, he's, and he said, well, she was a manager in, in 2008. So, yeah, she's like the only mid-2000 wrestlers here. And in response, I said, but tra-la-la. Didn't you see what happened on SmackDown and Raw? The past the past shows? His response, which made me laugh. Fuck you. Fuck WWE Raw. Fuck WWE SmackDown. Ugh. That was funny. He made me laugh because he's like, fuck those shows. Because he knows exactly what I was talking about. And... If WWE goes like full blown mid to late two thousands, man, they're gonna lose me, cause that's that's when they lost me. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just imagine a bunch of female wrestlers singing very, very, very bad karaoke to rest other wrestlers' themes. Not good. The only other thing that I could expect. Oh, God, no. You know, WWE, WWE did this once. They did it so sparingly. It was entertaining. But when it was every show, when they had a brawn panties match, just like, or a bikini contest. Or lingerie contest, or, or some other more degrading thing towards women. You're like, eh, they did this last week, whatever. The first couple of times, you're like, oh, we get to see, oh yes, we get to see Ruby Riot in a bra and panties. Ooh, that's pretty cool. However, the tenth time, you say, isn't that the same? Underwear Ruby Wright was wearing a the past couple of shows. Doesn't she have more underwear, or is that all the same dirty underwear? Oh, not that Ruby Wright does that, but that's the example, though. So when you get inundated with the same thing over and over and over again, again the first couple times, it's a novel idea. It's different, like I think when, or, or there's like a weird twist, like when Deborah came out with body paint on her, her tits, that was different. You're like, USA allowed this? Oh, wow, we saw, we saw a live sex show between Lita and Edge. Something popped out. I mean, granted, you still look for that for that random slip, but it's it's so random, and it's honestly all depending on the women, Carmella, <laughs> and their outfits, 
but you're like, yeah. Most of the time, you're like, yeah, nothing. Unless something, unless something really zany happens. Like uh, I think there was a time Sasha Banks split her wrestling trunks. Again, but if you think about it, it took, I think that happened like once. And then like a year and a half later, Lana pulled down the pants accidentally of Charlotte Flair. So everyone saw, woo! But, I mean, it was so, and before that, it was like, Two years since since um, the, the Bella slip. So if it's spread out like that, it's novel. If it's truly unexpected like that, like you saw Charles Schmell go, whoa! <laughs> and, and she very quickly pulled up her trunks. She's like, like she felt something hanging in the breeze. Um, even with Sasha Banks, you could tell she, she kind of kept her legs closed a little bit more, um, in pinfall attempts, like they were, oh, well, you can't see me, but I'm closing my legs fairly tightly, as tight as I can for a man. But, yeah, uh, AJ Styles, also when he had a, he had a tear, that's, again, against the table, it's just that weird... Like pure random thing that happens, and that's that's different. When it happens, oh well, if, if Charlotte Flair got got pant got pant got shorted or panted, depending on what the kids call it nowadays, um, we used to call it get, getting shorted. If that happened every show to Charlotte Flair, yeah, the first couple times it's going to be amazing. Like the fifth or sixth time, it's like, oh, Charlotte's going out there to get panted. Just like, I think, when Natalia went through her fart stage. The first couple times, it was funny. But then it got so placed. And you're like, really? No. So, if, they, if they're going to go back to the 2000s, you have to do it the right way. And you can't do it frequently, because if not, you're going to turn off a lot of people. That's kind of what this AEW fight for the Fallen felt like, because I'll be honest, it wasn't anything spectacular. I have a fear that AEW is just becoming another wrestling show. And you get enough of that, from the WWE, because you have WWE Raw, you have uh, NXT if, you, if you're so inclined to watch, which is more of which is more sports space. But I figure eh, it's NXT. I go to life. I go to the house shows anyway. Um, you have SmackDown. You have a pay per view every month, and you just get in it. You know, if you want to, you can watch the main event. They have two hundred five live. They have a bunch. Of programming, and it seems like okay. Well, now we're just going to t toss an AEW into the mix. Impact, at least to a degree, is, is its own thing. Ring of Honor is just boring. Jakarta is non existent, like nearly might as well be non existent nowadays. New Japan, COVID really zonked, but every so often they get some pretty good press. Again, when, when Evil turned on Naito, I told that to a friend. He's like, what? Why'd you spoil it for me? I wanted to know. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to see that. So, and of course, the, the big issue that I have with New Japan, if I don't watch the show, I have to stay up to like 1 or 2 in the morning. And then I have to go to work the next day, kind of early too. So it's not like I'm going to go to sleep. I think I would go to sleep at like, like I want to say, Wrestle Kingdom. Not the past one, because that ended kind of like early, early-ish. -ish. I think it went from like two to five. 
or two to six, which wasn't too yeah, it was like two to five and like like two to six, I think. But the previous Wrestle Kingdom, Wrestle Kingdom eleven, it was all one show. It went from like one a.m. until six a.m. until like almost like seven a.m. I think, like six thirty a.m. That's kind of rough because then you go to bed at six thirty a.m. Realize shit, I have to be at work. At that back then, I had to be at work at two, which wasn't too bad. But now I have I have to be at work at eight. Is it worth to get an hour and a half nap in? It's just rough. So with all that being said, let's talk about what what actually did happen. So thank you guys for your patience. I'll try to keep this show maybe under an hour. But so thank you guys for your patience and letting me kind of vent a little bit about AEW is becoming another two thousand mid two thousand wrestling show. But I started off with Cody Rhodes taking on Sunny Kiss. This was not a good match. Um, this should have honestly been a five-minute squash match. Cody should have absolutely crushed Sunny Kiss. And for some reason, I'm beginning to sound like Jim Cornette. But I think Jim Cornette says a lot of right stuff, especially when it comes to this nonsense. Uh, Cody Rhodes, he starts off hot. He does a lot of stuff. And again, I think that heat and humidity got to the wrestlers. Uh, I know here in Daytona, there's a lot of condensation in the one gym because you've have, you have seen one. I think they had to wipe the ropes down between every match. Not so much just from like body oils and stuff, but they were, it was just condensation sucks here in Florida. That's why I have coasters literally all over my house because if not, there would be freaking ring stains all over the place. And I do have to look, at, look into that later. But, but I have to get a new shelf. And I have to figure out where to put it. I have too many books. There's no such thing as too many books. But yeah, so I don't know if it was a heat or humidity, but he tried to do that that springboard suplex, and he just like literally dropped poor Sunny Kiss. Uh, and then he tried disaster kick, and that came off botchy too. It's it's been rare to see Cody Rhodes have this kind of a botchy mess. And you see two things in a row, and some other things that happen. In the ring, he he seems sluggish. He just seemed like like the heat and humidity got to him. And trust me, unless you've actually worked in Florida heat and humidity, you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. The first time I moved to Florida, I would go outside to check the mail, and I swear I would start sweating. So unless you, your body has to get used to that, and if you're coming in from nice air condition cooled place and all of a sudden you're like here's florida yeah not happening uh because i think he lives in georgia i want to say it's either a really nice apartment complex or it's a freaking amazing house because i'll tell you what that brandy wife of his is a lush so i was watching brandy Rhodes drank like a whole glass of like coal and fireball like by herself and 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 she poured like a very very generous portion and, and she had like a couple glasses of that stuff along with nyla rose seemed to be getting a little slushy too that'd be an interesting combination indeed we'll get to that also so i wonder if the heat and humidity got to both sunny i think sunny kiss is used to florida heat and humidity I want to say he's actually. They built him, I think, from. I forget if they built him from Michigan, but I think he spent a lot of time here in Florida, though. So, again, once you get used to working the Florida heat, it doesn't get to you as much. And I'll, I think coming from Michigan, I'm very cold tolerant. I still am cold tolerant. Um, just becoming heat tolerant. Like, I remember when I first moved here to Florida. I think I would honestly set the AC to like 74 at night and 80 during the day. And then eventually it kind of crept up where, well, before I got my little fuzz muffin, I used to set the house, I think, for one summer at 84. But then at night I'd drop it down to 74. So there'd be a 10 degree shift in the house temperature. 
Now I keep it at like 77 at night to sleep and 82 during the day. So I'm, it's, it's kind of been shifting slowly upwards. Again, it's mainly because I, I have a fuzz muffin. My fuzz muffin. Because I love her. I don't want her to get, to get too hot. And then during the winter, I just I just don't use the heat, or I I set the heat to like fifty five degrees. I think one winter it got to like fifty five twice. I got two days out of like the two weeks in February got cold. I think that was like the one week. I think it actually snowed. I think it did snow in Jacksonville, not here in Daytona Beach though. Or if it did. It like hit the roads and just melted. But enough about that. I'm telling way too many stories. This is not story time with Hobo Tom. I'm saving that for some other time. <laughs> when COVID shuts every shuts everything down. So they're getting to that because I know Walmart now also is requiring all Walmart's requiring face masks. That's not a good sign. But enough about that. Oh, they were also wearing all face masks at the show except for MJF and Lord Lowe. I applaud those two. Whenever I put on my little face shield, I feel like I'm going to like, I feel like the cops are going to show up and beat me because they, they think I'm going to rob them. But again, it was a really boshy match. Uh, then Sunny Farm tries forearms and they go to the outside. Uh, Sunny Kiss does a lot of kicks. Cody puts on a full Nelson. I'll tell you what, it looked like Sunny Kiss tapped out or passed out. He That should have been the end of the match. Cody should have graciously taken a victory using the full Nelson. Sunny Kiss is a smaller upper body wise compared to Cody. So I could see where the full Nelson would be more effective. There was some terrible looking drop kick where Cody like just like swatted it but sold anyway. Cody all I mean the thing is if I can tell that Cody's overselling. Like, there was a, the Huracurana. You could tell Cody Rhodes literally did, like, a front like a front flip to sell that. Because he got tossed in. He was bent over. He's like, oh, I forgot to go over the rest of the way. It's just that, that weird, like, two or three second delay. And you're like, really? You're going to flip over now? So it was just boshy. Sonny uh, had the X's and O's and a 450 splash. That actually looked pretty good. Uh, he went for the ass to face and he got tossed onto the steps. That's pretty cool. The Alabama slam on the steps should on, that should have freaking just just done that. Um, and Cody's just off for whatever reason. Again, I think the heat and humidity got to both these guys, probably more so of Cody. Uh, that was the reverse Tiger Driver it's for a two count. That should have ended the match. Then a Super Blacks a two count again. Any other wrestler would have ended the match. Sunny Kiss is not. A monster of a person where he can kick out of those moves. That shouldn't be happening. Then we see heel Cody. They start to trade a forearms. Um, was the, then he eventually hit the crossroads. Yeah, I just need a little quick re refreshment myself. So then we have the Lucha Brothers taking on FTR. Again, Pentagon Jr. and Dax starts off. They start off trading blows. Uh, the Lucha Brothers, they do a double team. And again, it was it was just some, some basic striking double team. Then they tried to do some move where one used the other as a weapon. That got botched up. And then it was... What was it? It was a serious super kicks. So yep, that's it. A little ground and pound, Phoenix. Uh, the the no splat. Uh, if you, Phoenix tried to do a splash, but now he got caught in a European uppercut. It's still a good looking spot. Because if you're coming down and something's coming up, you know, someone, it looks as, as if someone's going to get their head taken off, which is pretty freaking cool to see. Um, then Dax does hit the two snap suplexes. The Yays, uh, the other guy, I forget his name now. Scott. I'll call him. Uh, he does the yay booze with Pentagon on, on the apron, the flying DDT. 
It was pretty cool. That was done by uh, Pentagon. And then, of course, Ray Phoenix does a suicide splash. Um, again, then it was like a really weirdly time thing because Dax takes off the mask of Ray Phoenix and Ray Phoenix like literally covers up. Man, he had to have that mask on pretty loose. Because I know when I put my, ma my, my mask dress on, or when I see, or when I see El Vagabundo with his mask dress on, that's, I think it's on pretty tight. And yes, and, and I mean, I tried to yank it off him, it didn't come off. It was an old school match, too. Mask, I'm sorry, with like no Velcro on it, and it's just tied up in the back. Um, so when Ray Phoenix went to cover his face, he got rolled up. Very heelish win by FTR. And they're teasing stuff. And, and we'll get to that. Because we have the Young Bucks. Um, they hit a super kick party on the Butcher and Blake's door outside. They sell the stolen truck. Jerry made a great point. Where are the cops? Where are the authorities? The authorities. Get them down. They're, they're just, it was this is Grand Theft Auto. Especially for an antique car. J JR is actually right for a change. Uh, Super kick party. Now the Young Bucks have the keys. Kenny Omega brings some Miller Lite. And it was such a poorly done TV editing job where he looks like he took a black Sharpie and, and like, like, like tried to cross off the Miller Lite. You knew it was, though. Oh, that, was, that, that was funny. But then the FTR just poured the beer on the mayor like, it's fight, then be fighting words. So I'll tell you what, this match overall, it was FTR and Lucia Brothers, though. They did a lot more good than bad. <sighs> Is that, that was a cheeseburger match. You know, Chris Jericho coming out. Um, they were, like, saying there's, like, 30 prizes or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't tweet stuff. He said he's the king of the 19 to 49 demographics ratings. That's only because NXT has been losing the ratings war to, I'm sorry, AEW has been, like, losing the ratings war to NXT overall, but they still capture barely the 18 to 49 range. Uh, I can understand why after you see this match. And after this, uh, then he toasts some orange juice to Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy comes out. Orange juice comes from the ceiling. Uh, then there's a Jurassic Ex Express promo saying, Ha, ah, Chris Jericho's a stupid idiot. And what sucks, both for Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, you're getting doused with something that has a lot of sugar in it in the Florida heat. Yes, it evaporates quickly, but man, do you feel sticky and scuzzy for a while. Like I know if you've, I think in New Hampshire when we won a rugby game, we all doused each other with beer to, to celebrate. Yeah, it kind of looks cool. Until, like, when you put your hand against something and you literally stick to it. Because you're just, like, sticky feeling. Again, orange orange juice, if you spill it, you need to clean up right away in the Florida heat. Because if you let it sit there too long, it evaporates and just gets sticky. And no matter how, you have to take, like, a Brillo pad to clean up. So I actually feel bad for Chris Jericho. Uh, especially if he's in a $7,000 suit. Seven thousand dollar jacket, jacket's ruined. Just throw in the garbage for for people like hobos like me to collect. Cause it's it's gone. Uh, so then we have the Jurassic Express versus the Elite. Starts off actually pretty classic, um, classic wrestling match. Arm drags, the Mexican Mexican style arm drags are always fun to see. Uh, the top of the top of the rope they. They do mirror arm drags to each other, a little test of strength. The Greco-Roman test of strength. Yeah. That was kind of see uh, Jungle Boy. He can stop in his tracks, pull another move off. That's great. 
Then it was well, Marco Stunt versus Kenny Omega. Omega's literally laughing at him. This is where I think Omega really dug himself a hole being a popcorn match wrestler. Um, again, when he had, had a match with a blow, I think he had a match with a blow up doll once. He had a match with an, uh, a nine year old Riho way back in the day. Uh, he does a lot of goofy stuff, and this is where I think it came to bite him. Because then Marco Stunt, who takes himself probably a little bit too seriously, I'll tell you what I have to, I, I do have to agree with Jim Cornette. Marco Stunt looks like some like I'm not even gonna say high school kid. He looks like he's in like seventh grade, and it's like you get to a point where it's like, can you just just kill him? I hate to say it, but but yeah. And then we get a shot of Hangman Adam Page, the partner of Kenny Omega's, just in the back, drinking Jack and Coke, watching it on TV. Oh. oh, that was so good. And he's like, I don't care what he does with the elite. I'm going to sit in the bar and drink. He's, you know what? He's probably the smartest man there because he's sitting in... Because I've been to, to Daly's place. They do have a very nice enclosed air-conditioned bar. He is the smartest man there. And he's having some nice, refreshing Jack and Cokes with, I'm sure, plenty of ice. Oh, so refreshing. He's just there enjoying the wrestling matches. Bravo, Hangman Adam Page. Bravo. Then see your Matt Jackson lose your source. They do some rope running. Uh, Matt Jackson goes up, and Matt Jackson goes down. This match wasn't really that botchy, which is good. Um, but that's again they did a whole bunch of stuff to the outside. There were so many hurricanes to the outside and around the outside. Maybe that's becoming the most over overused move in wrestling because that always used to be a setup. But it was always done by more lucha style wrestlers. Now everyone does it, and it just doesn't seem exciting anymore. I don't know if that makes any sense, but again, you can always let me know in the comments or send an email saying, Oh my God, you sound like Jim Cornette, or say, Wow, you, you are right. Uh, then Matt, again, Mexican arm drag to get hurt, Corona. Again, more hurt. So many hurt for us. Uh, Kenny Omega does a Terminator dive. A lot of wrestling on the outside. Uh, let's see here. Marco stunt. Again, the slingshot. Uh, Jungle Boy has a slingshot DDT. That looks amazing, though. Uh, Luchasaurus eventually takes out all of the elite again with his kicks, his tail whip kick. And that headbutt of his looks just vicious. Maybe like Jurassic headbutt. Scottish headbutt, Samoan headbutt, Jurassic headbutt, Canadian headbutt. Which one am I missing? I know I'm missing one. Maybe regular headbutt's the fifth one. I don't know. Maybe I did have it in that order. Maybe that doesn't make sense. I have to. Go review some tape, I guess. But, oh yeah. All these things, eventually those are going to become collector's editions. Um, so, let's see here. Where was I now? Yeah, then there was the triple V triggers. And how Marco Stunt ever kicked out of that. Uh, although the Lucha Express did hit the extension level event. It took a save from the Young Bucks to get Kenny Omega out. So at least he's not, at least Kenny Omega didn't kick out. At least he had to be saved from it. Then there was a series of three uh, v, uh, v triggers and three Tiger drivers. Everyone kicked out of that. There was a, there was Jungle Boy. Or was it Marco Stunt? What? Marco Stunt nearly killed himself because he almost missed a 450 splash. He's lucky he landed on the legs and upper thighs. 
of Kenny Omega. Because if he was any more back towards the post, his chin would have gone right off Kenny Omega's knee. And either one would have wrecked Kenny Omega's knee, or Marco Stunt would have knocked himself out. Like, bored, like stiff as bored, twitching knockout. Because you hit your chin, and your chin, you do have, like, the, the nervous air. It's literally, like, the off switch. You get that neck cranked backwards. Yeah, that's just the off switch. Marco almost hit himself with the off switch. And that did not look good. Then there was a super Canadian Destroyer. That actually did look pretty cool, though. But then they kicked out of that, though. It's like the Canadian Destroyer used to be the most lethal move ever. Only, I think, for the longest time, it was protected because only Petey Williams did it. And when he did it, that was the end of the match. Now everyone does it and everyone kicks out of it. It's not fun anymore. Now, Kenny Omega then hit what I call the, the half-winged angel because there's no way when he did it on Marco's stunt that that's a full one-winged angel. That's like half a person getting up there. Like, that's me picking up my nephews on my shoulder and, like, tossing them around. So, that was the match. Um, wasn't terrible. And I couldn't do a lot of that stuff. It's a cheeseburger, cheeseburger mash with extra sloppy sauce on it. Then Omega starts to beat up Marco Stunt. And then, and then the Young Buck stops him. And then Kenny looks at him and, and says, But he tried to kill you. It's like, yeah. I would want Kenny Omega to fight for me too. It's like, wait, you're right. He almost did kill me. Beat him up some more. But no, the Young Bucks are too faced for that. We're going to see a turning o Omega, o Kenny Omega. Oh, and then we go back to the bar. FTR. Joins Hangman and Page for some Jack and Coke. I think they are teasing a little bit of the return of the Four Horsemen to a degree. So you might, it might be, I think from what I've heard, it might be Cody Rhodes would be the Ric Flair. You have the Minnesota Wrecking Crew would be FTR, and then. Hangman Adam Page is just like the like the brawn. He's yeah yeah he yeah he's the uh, brawn of them. You have the tag team. So yeah, so you have your champ. You have your tag team. And then you have your brawn guy. So that makes sense. Uh, then um, what's his face interview? Sheeta. Sheeta does a great interview. I'll tell you what, Sheeta. Even Sheeta makes that belt look small. They, they need to get rid of that freaking woman's belt because that looks like a, a freaking toy. It looked it looked Rio sized, but on Nyla Rose it looked too small. And even on Sheeta. If they made it if they put an inch around it and changed the shape of it a little bit, it looks so much better. It's the way it is. It's it's thin and then like bulges out really big in the center. It just looks awkward. It, it, it. Besides the AEW Championship belt, because that looks like amazing. The tag belts look like tag belts, <laughs> and then probably the FTW belts. So the, to the top belt, the AEW Championship belt, best looking belt. Then the tag belts look like tag belts. I mean, they don't look truly special, but they're not ugly. They're not horrific, though. The FTR belt, the FTW belt's pretty cool. And then it's a toss-up between the unfinished TNT Championship and the women's belt. They just might as well have made a freaking trios belt, because I'm sure they could have done that better. And then John Mossy does a promo. And you have the Nightmare Sisters of Cheerleader Allie. Allie, Allie. 
And oh my god, did you see that outfit of Brandy Rhodes? Oh my. Brandy Rhodes doesn't need a wardrobe malfunction. You might as well. And it's all like pleather or latexy stuff for both. You know, eventually one day they're going to turn on each other. And they were facing this woman who I have a picture with. That's right, folks. That is NXT's own MJ Jenkins. <laughs> I don't know if it's good to see her here, though. I mean, she was released. That's not good. She was just getting on her own and developing herself as a character in NXT. And, they... and she was there for a while, too. Mm. And they have. The, the original mean girl, Kenzie Page, who is still trying to fight off the COVID-13. Kenzie Page is cute looking, though. I'll give her that much. Uh, starts off, uh, Allie and Brandy Rose are somehow on the same page. Like, they just beat up Kenzie Page. They, they tag in. She, t she eventually tags in NJ Jenkins. Just get beat up. Uh, I'll tell you what. Allie has that great death drop elbow combination. And Brandy has that pretty good looking spear this is actually what it should have been it should have been a quick match a dominating squash match I mean yeah Andrew Jackson got in a couple of forearms in the clothesline Kenzie Page got in a clothesline really you're gonna pick yeah it was a squash match this is proper squash match the, the jobbers actually tried they just were well overmatched. Um, it was a quick match. Dustin Rhodes, Dustin Reynolds, raised both the hands of of Brandy and Allie, who has her stuffed little apple because QT Marshall still has has coronavirus. We won't see him for a while. It was a quick match. Is what what it should have been. I'll tell you what. Ooh, this is gonna upset some people. But besides the main event, this was probably the best match on the card. I hate to say it, folks. This is also getting... It's one of the rare times I did this, but this was just what it should be. No, because I could have this match too. It's a ham sandwich. Nyla Rose makes her big announcement, or, or she makes someone make... Their big announcement, Vicky Guerrero is her manager. Oh, wow. Again, Troll, I said, wait, Vicky's from 2008. Didn't you see what happened on WWE? Fuck WWE. Fuck Raw. Fuck SmackDown. Ah. He knew I was right. He knew once I said, hey, this is like mid, mid to late. 2000 wrestling when WWE sucked with the rare exception because I think there was no the sexual I think was after after that that was like 2000 tell me when that's a live sexual was I forget I want to say it was like 2010 ish my it was either the early aughts or like the early teens. I don't think it was in this. It could have been. I still think it was later though. What? Whatever. Vicky Guerrero shows up. Yeah, she showed up 2008. That's pretty close in the mid aughts, right? Tra la la. <laughs> and then he's. And I just. I just love the way he put it. Fuck WWE. Fuck Raw. Fuck. SmackDown, they suck. And and then it's like, like with the implication of like, hey, this is what AEW is becoming too. So again, not that impressed. And Vicky Guerrero, even though she's, she can definitely do the manager role. There's really no, fee how do I put it? There's no other women with managers 
as like true managers because granted the nightmare sisters they have dustin but no one else really has a manager i mean uh leva bates has what's his face but he's not really a manager dustin's really a wrestler i don't know unless they they get a stable or something unless they bring back jay strongbow i don't see how this is gonna go uh, Britt Baker, she has her nose and like lip taped up. That or she was trying to wear like a, a COVID mask while drinking something. And I don't, I just want to see when Rebel turns on her. That's all I care about. Then we get to the main event. Yeah, is all of wrestling coming back to the, the mid late two thousands? Title of said show. Uh, then we had the main event, Brian Cage. I'm going to get this done in five minutes or less. Brian Cage versus John Moxley. Fast start, strike heavy. Um, Cage, he just does the curl toss slam. Um, and there was some drunk chick there, too. Some drunk chick in red, and it wasn't Ren Renee Young. Because this was, was a little on the thick side. I like my women thick, baby. Yeah, sweetheart. Thick and drunk. Yeah. But yeah, they were like letting random people in, I think. Like if they were one of the 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 few super lo the, the few super fans, uh, every wrestling promotion has them. They're like, "Yeah, okay. You can come in just like go back there and stay away from people." But yeah, there was a drunk chick there. I think I remember her at the show cuz she wore I think the same red dress. Okay. Who wears a fancy red dress to a wrestling show? Indeed. Uh, then Moxley begins to work with the left arm. He does some arm bars. Uh, uh, kind of bounces it off the ropes. Uh, sends it. Then sends the left arm in, into the... Ring post. Uh, Moxley then tried to use the barricade. He took the covers off. The bike racks, because they're not barricades. Barricades are heavier. Those are bike racks they're freaking using, because they're cheap. Cheap AEW people going back to late aught gimmicks. But yeah, he, so he stuck his arm in there, started to twist it a little bit in a wrist lock. Uh, eventually, Cage powers out. Mox then sets up the barricade, but Mox... The rule of barricades and bike racks is the same as that of tables. You set up said bike rack, you go through the bike rack. That's what happened. Moxie got slammed on to that. And then he was dumb. Dumb, dumb, dummy. Because Moxie set up a chair. And the same rule applies. You set the chair up, baby. He got through played through the chair. Uh, and then the discus clothesline was reversed into the paradigm shift. Moxie then hit a pretty good Kimura. Then he transferred that to an arm bar and then a Juju Katami. Juju Katami, that'll tear everything to shreds. Taz tossed the Talon. Cage lost, but he did not tap. Nor say I quit. Someone else quit for him. So at least this leads us to a more proper pay per view match in the future. We'll see. Um, again, this was probably the best match of the card. It's a. I thought like for a while, Cage, when he came back, he was upset. He nailed Mox with the F FTW belt. Lights go out. I half expected. I'm like, oh god, Taz is here. Please, please, let the lights go out. Let there be someone special that shows up. But Darby Allen showed up instead. Um, so he say so there'll be a feud probably between Cage and Darby Allen for a while. Eventually, Cage is gonna uh, yell at Taz, and Taz will probably be the cowering heel manager. This match is actually good. Um, nothing can't really rip it apart. It's a cheeseburger match. And that was a real. Ham sandwich of a dynamite 
and or special pay-per-view titled show. So, with that being said, rest of the week, tomorrow sometime, El Vagabundo Hobo Vente Cinco El Hijo is going to show up. Uh, we might get a special appearance from Dr. Tom as well. I don't know what exactly is going to happen with those two. If they get in the same house at the same time, I have no idea what would happen. I think I'd better hide the, the scotch and, and tequila, I, I think. Um... Friday's going to be smacked on. Hopefully, it's a lot better. Um, Saturday, I will be doing a RR&R show. I'll be able to show a couple more clips, but not too many. I have to kind of watch what I do with Impact. They, they, they kind of give me the finger wag. Eventually, the finger wag goes from the...